Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, it, okay, I understand we got an extra day this this month for this year for February, but this month has dragged. It has. It has, and, but I'm okay does, with it. It doesn't help that we experience all four seasons in one day. Right? I was just looking at that. It was 75 an hour and a half ago. It is 59 right now. And dropping. And Fast. dropping. And that yes. wind. If I was driving the right way, I could have got pushed home after oh, yeah. Day. Oh, yeah. So, what's that saying? Uh, Kansas. You don't like the weather? Wait 10 minutes. <laughs> exactly. I got a buddy who lives down in Joplin, and he was saying that uh, he's going to be at the same, you know, at this little river creek spot. He's going to go uh, wakeboarding this morning and then snowboarding this afternoon, all in the same spot. That sounds about right. Yep. So getting started with the show, we're going to deviate just a little bit because I, I, I want to talk about this Cam Newton thing. Um, everybody who's familiar with the fight. If you haven't, it's all over YouTube and everywhere else. Him getting a, a fight with a couple other brothers. I actually dove in deep this morning and read the entire story. And just in a nutshell, these two brothers that used to work with him um, in their seven on seven sports thing, they broke off and they formed their own company. But as fate would have it, Cam's group ended up playing the other guy's group this past weekend. And just a little more, a little more backstory. Cam Newton is a big talker. And when I mean talker, I mean trash talker. Nothing new for most guys in sports. I get it. But Cam apparently took it a little too far. Not only has he been heckling these guys and talking trash every time they played, keep in mind the brothers team has beat them every time they played. At this point, if I'm Cam, I shut up. But he took it a step further and he kept heckling them on Sunday and this is after they've played Cam's team. They're playing somebody else. No, doesn't matter. He's at the top of the staircase. Heckling. Parents are listening to this. So keep in mind, there's live witnesses. The brothers have had all they could take, but they let it go. They're going off the field. They're doing whatever they got to do. But I believe it was the younger brother. I believe his name was TJ. I, I, I don't want to mention names because I don't have the story here, but we'll just say the younger brother. He's going by the staircase. Cam said something. And according to his account, he, whatever it was that Cam said, set him off. And they start going at it, you know, verbally in the staircase. One thing led to another. And I believe a swing was taken. Don't, don't want to say by who first, but it escalated from there. The older brother saw that his younger brother was into it with Cam. And he saw that it was about to get physical. Okay. I side with him on this. If my bro is in trouble, I'm there. I am there. Now, keep in mind, the younger brother is like 5'9", whatever. Cam is what, 6'2"? At least Probably. 240. And I'm just going by his playing weight. Right. So, yeah, if I see that, I already know the odds are not in the brother's favor. I'm there to the rescue. We're going to make this a little bit more even. And apparently one thing led to another. There was fisticuffs. They both got the best of Cam. That's where we stand today. And it is documented by several people in the article that I read that Cam was the instigator. Cam would not let it go. And that sounds just like Cam. This is the same person who still believes that he can start at quarterback in the national football league. No, you cannot Cam. 
your time is over. You're one of us so, now. You're a civvy. I didn't watch the whole video. Did he actually, did they actually get the best of him? Because I heard opposite. I heard he held them off. It's hard to tell from that video. It the, really the, is. The, the video back meme, and forth. Like the video meme that I seen was something to the effect of, you know, I can't stand Cam Newton because the dude can hold off two or three attackers but won't die for a fumble in a Super Bowl. You know, that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I, I haven't, I'm going to have to watch it. Uh, but yeah, I didn't actually. I don't like Cam Newton. Cam is very arrogant. And from what I read in the article, it shows. And, and it's okay to be arrogant. I'm going to go from the Deion Sanders school. It's not arrogant if you're right. Who's who's saying that he's, I mean, who, depending on what he's heckling them on, it's not a right or wrong deal. But that's the thing. He was heckling and, them on wins and losses when every single time these guys played them, they beat Cam's team. Then then why get upset? Scoreboard. That would, that would be my response. Scoreboard. And, and 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 that was until uh, I think something was said that was a little personal, and that's yeah. what caused the younger brother to you know confront him. True, but who's in control of your actions? Yourself. So yeah. if you're going to let and somebody ver verbally get you into a physical altercation, then you need in to no way, shape, or form do up. I you know disagree with you. I I agree one hundred percent. But I am of the side with the older. How old guy. How old was the younger guy? Uh, I don't know. Kid. All I know is he was the little brother. Because both of like, them were, were these guys all old enough to know better? Yes. Including Cam? Okay. Yes. All right. Now, I get the older brother going in there to not necessarily help his little brother jump into the fight, but to uh, de-escalate it. I could see that, you know. Um, I mean, not not switching from something as whimsical as this to what happened in the parade, but you know anything nowadays can happen from a confrontation. You know, somebody right. pulled a gun and then it's an over. So, you know, uh, and, and you're absolutely right. You words are be powerful. The person. You've got to yes. be the bigger person, no matter what. But from what I understand, this has been happening for a couple of years now, so it's it obviously it, had to wear on him. And I bet you it's going to continue. Cam knows that he got his goat, so he's going to continue to pull that scab. You know, you got to let that, him know it doesn't bother you no more. What's that adage in entertainment? Bad news is still good news or yeah. still There is whatever. no such thing as bad publicity. Exactly. Cam got himself in the news again, so. Yep. You know, Cam would really please me if he just cut that damn hair. I'm going to leave that alone. We'll get back to hair in a little bit. He he was uh his time is over. Excuse me. All right, so check it out. This article I read. Waitress fired after receiving ten thousand dollar tip and splitting it with her coworkers. Now th this is interesting because on the surface you're like, what? Now it says here, I was willing to share ten thousand dollar tip, but was reciprocated with hate and rumors wrote Lindsay Boyd. So Lindsay received a $10,000 tip on a $32.43 bill and she was fired from her workplace after she split the generous sum with her coworkers. Uh, she was sacked from the Mason Jar Cafe in Michigan after sharing the money, but business has said their decision was has nothing to do with the tip. So we'll get back to that in a second then. Um, the restaurant has since uh, inundated, has been inundated with dozens of negative reviews as Boyd's supporters criticized the cafe for letting her go. Letting her go. Um, the alleged problems began when the seemingly positive event uh, in the middle for the middle-aged benefactor who wanted to remain anonymous made a generous donation. First of all, before I go any further, shout out to that brother or sister, whoever that was. You drop a $10,000 tip on somebody, that shows that you care and you understand what the average ordinary working man or woman has to do. That that ain't what it says. There's something else going on for that $10,000 tip. Come on now. Okay. I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. 
Okay. Now, the mystery man had just attended a uh, friend's funeral and wanted to honor his memory and brighten someone's day. According to the uh, general manager, Tim Sweeney, who spoke to the Detroit Free Press, he requested that the tip be split among staff, which worked out to around $1,600 per person for the eight servers. Still not bad. Um, the drama ensued after that act of kindness, according to Boyd, who did not go into details on the nature of the problems. Uh, rumors have circulated that the disagreements were sparked by employees who did not work on the day and expected to receive a cut of the donation. All right, I'm going to stop right there for this part. So here. the so the people that weren't on yeah they weren't on the clock that day they mm -hmm. want some money is that what they wanted saying? a piece of that. Oh, <laughs> now okay. now now here's my thing. You know I'm gonna put myself in her position. It's me and seven other y'all. Let's let's split this. Let's do this. Sixteen hundred a piece. That's a good chunk of change for us working today. Yeah. Now if person X comes in and says. Well, I didn't work that day, but I should get some of that. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. You didn't work that day, just like you said. It's no different than any other day. You don't get any of my tips. Why would you want some of my tips today? I mean, unless you're going to start giving me a cut of your tips going on when I'm not on the clock. then yeah, Right. So, so um, she said she then received a phone call on Tuesday to say that she had been sacked, fired. Sounds like somebody British wrote this act. It's fired people. <laughs> um, finally, I got the call. I got the call and then I'm fired. Now I'm without a job for the first time since I was 15. The call came after she was asked to make, to take a mental health break for a couple days. Now, more people than I can count thought I should have just kept all the money and not shared. The thought hadn't even occurred to me. But hindsight is always 2020. Here we are a week later and I'm out of a job. I was willing to share $10,000, but was reciprocated with hate and rumors because I was not willing to disclose the name that I heard through the rumor mill. This amazing act of kindness has brought out some serious ugliness and I'm taking the fall for it all. Now the restaurant owners, Abe Martinez and Jane Cousins said they could only share limited information on what led to the dismissal. In a Facebook post, they claimed that, uh, excuse me, a claim had been made in a recent, by a recent employee of ours. We cannot comment on the nature of her losing her job due to labor laws. Yeah, hiding behind the laws. Okay, got it. Uh, however, I will say it had nothing to do with the tip. She did receive the entire tip. She did not pay taxes on it. The business did. Yes, she shared the tip at the request of the man that left it. We do truly care about our staff. That's a lie. I'll get into that in a minute. We have, we've had the same crew for five to six years. We have college girls that come home every summer and have been here for four years now. We take our staff up north. At the end of every summer season, we give the donations to college funds for them. We kept them employed through COVID. We do everything in our power not to lose staff. We hope it is clear that the decision was not made lightly or hastily. Okay, Big Show. So what was she fired for again? That's just it. They, they would not disclose that. They would not disclose that. So in my mind, this girl gets a $10,000 tip. The man who remains anonymous says, hey, you know, share it with everybody today. That would mean the world. Random act of kindness. That's what my uh, departed friend would want. Okay. We're all on the same page here. And she said that the thought never crossed her mind to keep it all. She immediately wanted to share it with everybody. I'm thinking, and this is just me, because, you know, this is me playing inch high private eye on my own podcast. I'm thinking that some of them people that didn't work got all up in their feelings and they might be a little bit closer to the bosses and they made trouble. And that's why this girl got fired. That's what I'm thinking. Cause you know, yeah, why else would you mention that? 
they'd have to fire some they'd have to give her some sort of i mean obviously we don't know exactly where this is because michigan the, oh it wasn't michigan okay well you yeah, said terminology said was sacked so yeah they kept saying sacked. Um, i'm like that's a british term why are you saying that yeah it's a mason jar cafe in michigan you would think that they would have to they would have to give some sort of reasoning behind the termination. Now, let me say this, because I live in Kansas. Kansas is a cause state. I can get fired from my job just because they feel like it, and they don't have to give an explanation. Don't know what Missouri law is or any other states out there, but Kansas, they can fire you for just because they want to fire you. Michigan might be like that, too. Well, even in the state of Kansas, they can't just... They, they have to tell you there's a reason, i.e. the most of their reason is going to be, you know, we're we're eliminating your position. We're downsizing. Well, yeah, they can, they can throw out any. That's what any that's that's what answer. they're going to say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can't just walk into work one day and they just ra willy nilly fire you. That, that's you can get sued. We've been sued in the state of Kansas for that um, because I, you know, we we didn't give a guy adequate time to learn his job supposedly mm. about 10 10 years ago which was bs but that, that i digress let's go into a whole nother issue but um i'm just curious because i mean from her standpoint because she would have a a legal cause to to be able because even in the state of kansas you know if i'm if i'm firing you for disciplinary action i gotta have a paper trail that i've warned you i've written you up things like that yeah that you know with a good you know so it's just that's very strange to me yeah i mean somebody's not telling the whole thing here that much we know yeah most definitely and i think if it does boil down to those people being butthurt because they weren't working you know get over it exactly all right, show. I'm going to get something important here because, you know, right. I'm men. Men. Okay. Um, this article was really weird until I got to reading it. It said the Y chromosome is disappearing. And here's what it means for men. Now, in the span of 166 million years, the male sex chromosome has shed the majority of its 1,600 genes. In other words, um, sex determination at birth is decided by chromosomes in the baby. A female has two X's, whereas a male has an X and a Y. According to Medline Plus, in every cell, humans possess 23 pairs of chromosomes, among which the sex chromosomes constitute one pair. The X comprises roughly of 155 million DNA-based pairs and makes up 5% of the total of all DNA cells. The Y extends to over uh, more than 59 million DNA building blocks and accounts for 2% of the DNA cells. However, according to the uh, conversation, the Y chromosome is degrading uh, at a concerning rate. Now, before I go over this uh, article in depth, you know how we watch those science fiction movies and the races have evolved and they're all pale skin, bald head. They've got huge heads and they all seem like they're the same sex. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're turning into that, I guess. Well, before you, before, you, before you frighten all millions of our slightly warped viewers. I think they said that it'd take another 45 million years for it to be completely uh, destroyed. I think that's what I read. It was like, it, it was quite a bit. It won't happen in our lifetime or our kids' lifetime or our kids' kids' lifetime. Uh, yeah, it is 4.5 million years. There you go. I knew it had a four and a five in there somewhere. So, yeah, just to let everybody know, you ain't got to worry about your children, your grandbabies, your grandbabies' babies on down the line until you get to your great, great, great times 20. Um, you'll be all right. Now, and hopefully by then the Lord will already come back and, and we don't even have to worry about that. Amen. But I, I just thought about it, you know, just skimming over the article. I'm like, what are some of the causes that you think 
contribute to this because I'm not going to lie. Um, the human race has become more effeminate across the board. Uh, when you get um, all these people talking about uh, transgender this or uh, I recognize myself as dot, dot, see, dot. Effeminate is a mindset. Effeminate, you know, a male that's transgender, he takes on uh, the feminine mindset. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do. I mean, he still has the XY chromosomes. He's still technically a male. He's choosing to act that way or feels like he needs to act that yeah, way. Yeah. But think about it like this. If he chooses to act that way and he, that's one less guy having sex with a woman. So that's one less man throwing his uh, Y chromosome out there. So over the course of time, you're going to lose that chromosome true but i don't think it it makes anyone less masculine or more feminine because it it's it's the recipe of the actual sex it doesn't take into uh sexual preferences and things like that that's just where i i differ on what you said um yeah and, and, I, I do i do think that that society in general in america mm -hmm. for sure is is a lot softer than other generations and more tolerant of these types of behaviors than in the past but i wouldn't say the human race in general because i'm sure there are other countries that don't have this particular issue True, true. But I also believe that, and I'm not just blaming it on trans this, trans that, whatever. Oh no, it's it's in the food that we eat. You know, there's there's stuff that messes with hormones. That that's not helping. I do um, agree. I do agree. Know, anything that creates more estrogen than testosterone is already setting you up for failure. If you remove said, uh, uh, if if I'm a male, if I remove the tes testosterone, then yes, the more ingesting of of estrogen will make me more effeminate. That is true, mm -hmm. but by nature we produce testosterone. Period. Yes. No matter what you consume. Right now, well, I just personal basis. We might be person, producing less of it. Personal testimony right here. Mm -hmm. I am a almost a 15 year testicle cancer survivor. They had to remove one of my testes back in the day when I had my surgery. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that in a male, the testicles are what produces the that uh, 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 testosterone. testosterone. Yeah. I produce the same amount of testosterone with one nut than I did with both. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making half because I only have one. So that's what I mean by we produce it naturally. Now, if you remove it, mm -hmm. then, then yes, I can see that argument, but we do eat a lot of processed foods, you know, like they pump up, you know, yeah. you can see it in the, you can see it in the young ladies. I mean, their they their bodies develop faster than what they were when we were younger mm. because of all the chemicals that are pumped into the food you know to make the chickens bigger and the and the hogs bigger and the and the, and the whatever we eat bigger bigger eggs you know all that stuff so it all that does i do agree that does come into effect yeah um like we said at the beginning though we won't see the effects of this for another 4.5 million years so we're good. Yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully I'm not around that long. If you if you manage to pull that off, I want to know your secret. All right, before we being close a, out being, of here. Not being a Raiders fan. Well, then I'm just going to have to die then. <laughs> All right, a couple weeks ago, we talked about a young, a young boy that was at a school who had a high top fade, just a simple high top fade, and the school 
did not allow him to be there with it uh, as a disciplinary action. We thought that was the stupidest thing in the world. Yep. There's more. Texas school legally punished a black student over his hairstyle. And as, as I get, got into it, I was, I was like, why? Why? This is, uh, let's see here. In Texas, a black school student's uh, months-long punishment by his Texas school district for refusing to change his hairstyle does not violate a new state law that prohibits race-based hair discrimination, a judge said. Uh, his name is Daryl George. He's 18. So this is not a little kid. This is a young man. He, he's not been in his regular high school classes since August 31st because the district says the length of his hair violates its dress code. Now, I'm looking at the pictures and I sent you the article. The man has cornrows. He, he, so I'm trying to figure this out and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed. What could they possibly, it, and it's called the crown act, uh, which took effect in September. It prohibits race-based hair discrimination and bars employers and schools from penalizing people because of hair texture or protective hairstyles, including afros, braids, locks, twists, etc. They, the schools, was I believe found not guilty of uh, the Crown Act. It blows my mind. First of all, what is wrong with this boy's hair? Have we come that far that we just want to find a reason to get rid of somebody? These kids have been wearing corn rolls and braids for years now. Hell, if I had hair, I'd probably be having it all braided up now, but I don't. I digress. That was many, many years ago. I can tell you this, though. And this is because of a previous employer that I was at. I was the manager at a store. And we had interviewed several people because we needed to, you know, get some more people to fill the store. Wonderful, wonderful interview with a young man who was going to college. He wanted to work for us, sports store. He was big about sports. He loved it. He could sell anything. We hit it off in the interview. I wanted to hire him. My district manager said we can't unless he cuts his hair because he had braids. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why in the world would you do something that stupid? We've got the perfect person here that can sell the product, that loves the product, and you don't want them because of their hair? And this company was based in Alabama, uh, one of those good old boy companies. We'll just call it that. Because if you had tats, braids, or your hair was a different color than normal, they would not hire you. Period. We, we had a girl on staff that was already working, she dyed the tips of her hair purple. The district manager said, you need to dye it back or you won't have a job. She was like, bye. We lost somebody right there on the spot. I couldn't understand it. Now, I will, in full disclosure, tell you that since I've been gone, I do know that they have changed those policies and they, they no longer have those in effect. If you had tats, you had to have them covered at the time. That's no longer the thing anymore either. But it just boggled my mind that less than a decade ago, that kind of thing was still going on. We have to stop doing this kind of stuff because we are hampering ourselves by negating someone else's culture just because it doesn't go with what we like. Yeah, I mean... Here again, you you can't offend anybody in this day and age, right? Right. Okay. So just just playing the flip side of the whole scenario. Was all this stuff in what well, you know what? We're not even gonna talk about your old company because they're not even part of this thing, right? Right. For the for this young man, the is it in the school code of conduct? Code. How long is it's, it is it all in there? 
Well, the dress code, let me see if the article says what the dress code Because I was just reading it, and and basically, if he was to untangle his cornrows, it would fall below the length of what they allow the hair in the school. Right. That is why. Yeah, it which is why they are saying, you know, it doesn't. I personally don't find anything wrong with this hairstyle. I mean, he he well, it's it's well, before stupid. we close it out, let me ask you this. If this was a girl, it wouldn't even be an issue. Cuz most women's hair naturally falls below the shoulder. True, but where their difference is is they're not allowed to wear skirts above a certain type of their knee. You know, guys can wear shorts, you know, girls necessarily can't. You know, guys can walk around without their shirt on or the girls can't. I mean, they can in my book, but not, you know, just out in public. Uh, you know, that right. type of thing. I mean, so there's different rules for women that there are for men, even in the dress codes. They just I honestly think it's probably I mean, there is no probably it's it is blatant uh racial discrimination. Um yeah, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong with this kid's hair, uh, and it, it's a it's a shame. And, and the fact that he's eighteen years old, you you know, you can't tell a grown person what to do now. Anyway, he's an adult. So, and, and what makes it so sick? We've talked about it before with the young man, um, and we see it every day. It's it's in sports. Uh, yes, you know, I've seen articles where you'd have to have your hair cut before you can wrestle or play this sport or that sport, swim. We're making big deals about something that shouldn't even be a deal. If it's part of your heritage, your ethnicity, I'm, or I mean, yes, just no, your lifestyle. I, if you and I were in uh, the food industry, mm -hmm. they probably would not let us keep our beards. Right. Worst worst case scenario, we'd have to have the beard net. You know, yes. but, you know, so there are stipulations for certain things and I get it, you know, and granted, our our racial and religious beliefs has nothing to do with our facial hair. But there are a lot of people out there that have that belief, you know, Amish, you know, you men must have a beard, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't know. I, I think that it, the, the, in this particular case, just looking at it through, you know, blatantly what it is, it's 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 all out racism and uh, racial discrimination, and it needs to be stopped. I agree. Before we get out of here, I just want to comment that we are to be Christ-like. Jesus had a beard. I'm just yes, he did. Right yes, he did. <laughs> All right, good show. Big show, honestly, take us on out of here. Honestly, probably had an afro too, if you actually read the Bible. <laughs> That's a topic for another day. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe. And uh, the next few weeks, man, we got some special stuff coming up. I'm in excited. Yes. Love your neighbor. Love your loved ones. Tomorrow's not promise. See you next week. Y'all take care.